All right, we are working on a Pentair Easy Touch 8 today. I'm gonna to show you how to label it. If you can't figure out what it is, you can open up the panel here and look at it that way. So, we're starting up a brand new pull today. This thing has never been worked on. And so what I do with mine is I always start first with doing the time. Okay, so you've got menu, you've got select, and then you have your up and down buttons and to scroll to what you wanna scroll on. So we're gonna start by going to your settings to go to our clock. And I go into my clock here and I select the clock and I, you see there's a one and there's a two. Go to my two first and you will see we have daylight savings time. If you live in Arizona, then uh, you don't need daylight savings time. Thank God we don't have to change our times. It stays the time all the time, but for us, we need it on manual, right? So once we've dealt with that, then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select the month. It is January. And then we're gonna go to the day, which is seventh. And we're gonna change the year. It is 2021. We are thankful 2020 is over. And then we're gonna pick Thursday and let's see what time it is. 314 go up and down here till you get to the 14 and you pick your a.m. p.m. it is p.m. so we're gonna pick that then we go back so I already did this I went through and I pushed each button and saw what came on and then you just label them put your stickers on figure out what's what it is very important that you do that before you do this part because you need to know what they are before you can tell the system what it is so you go into settings and you come down to circuit names it is very important that you start with this. You have to tell what circuit names and circuit functions are before you do anything else. You can kind of do some other things later, but this is the most important starting point. So spall is gonna stay spall, pull is gonna stay pull. Those are kind of standard set, but then we see auxiliary one. Auxiliary one, it would say auxiliary one here if I didn't put a sticker over it. So we click on it and I have it as pull light. So we are gonna change it to what I have it is, which is pull light. They are in ABC order, so you can go up or you can go down, depending on which one you're trying to get to first, and there are a ton of options. But the main thing to pay attention to is this three of 18, which one are you on? And look at which one you were on last. We were just on pull light, we went to the next auxiliary. So now we're on spall light. Double check every time which one you were on last, because if you do them out of order, you will have to redo it all. And if you do your functions wrong, it just messes up the order of everything. I've done it before and it is a massive pain. So if you just slow down a little bit and look at each one over and over again, every time you do it, it will save you reprogramming over and over again. Saves you a lot of time. So slow down, work faster. Um, it's the way to do it, right? So we had pull, spa, water feature and I have pull spa water feature. My next one is air blower and air blower is not in alphabetical order. I'm not sure why, but it's not. After air blower, I have cleaner. I'm gonna go up to cleaner. My next one will be spillway. We're gonna scroll all the way down. After spillway, I have another one. I'm not using it. You could make like a spa high. You could, depending on what you had and what you wanted, if you had any features that you need valves for, whatever they had, you could add something else there for this pull and what it has. I don't need it. You have to go into functions and tell them what they do. The spa is master spa and it is freeze protected. Pull is master spool, pull and it's freeze protected. Pull light, you have to tell it what kind of light it is. Uh, most Pentairs are using the Intellibrite. If you do not tell it it's an Intellibrite, it will not work. You do not have to freeze protect them if they do. Just know that every time you have a cold night, the light will come off and the customer will call you and say, hey, did you schedule my light to come on in the middle of the night? And then you gotta, you gotta say, hey, it's gonna come on every time it's cold because it's on freeze protect. So if you want to, go ahead. I do not. I wanna deal with those phone calls, so I don't do it. Water feature can be generic, air blower can be generic, cleaner can be generic, spillway cannot be generic. Spillway has to say spillway 
because spillway is connected to a valve. It does not have to be freeze. But if you don't make spillway say spillway, then the valve will not work. So you gotta tell the spillway valve to work with spillway or it will not work. So I'm just going back through and looking to make sure they're all in the right order. Right, I had pool, then I had pool light, then I had spa light, then I had water feature, then I had air blower, then I had cleaner, then I had spillway. So all of them are right. So what I always do immediately, just so I don't forget, I go back to the beginning and I find my lights and I always config my lights because if you don't immediately configure your lights, you'll forget and then they won't work. You have to configure them. So whatever lights you have, I just have a pull light and a spa light. So I have to tell it that I have pull light and a spa light. They both have to be configured. So now they are. So I've got my pull light and spa light. There's no other lights on this pool. They are configured. They both are told in the functions that they're in Telebrites. Now they will work, okay? Very important that you make it say that. Um, so now our lights are good to go. So what I always do next, after that, you can kind of go in some of your own orders, um, but that is very important that you start with your naming it and then functions in the beginning, okay? I go after that to settings and I go to my IntelliFlow. You go to your pump. If you have several variable speeds and you've got it, go and name each one. I've only got one. It is a VSF. You can look on the side of the pump and see what it's labeled as. You tell it it's a VSF, save it, go back. It still says VSF there. You have to make a speed for each thing that you have. We have a cleaner, we have a spa, the water feature is on its own pump, so we don't have to do that one. Spillway has a speed. If you don't give them a speed, they're not going to work when they push that button. You can do RPMs or you can do gallons per minutes, whichever one you choose. Make sure you do everything in that. I like uh, the RPMs just because there's I've had issues with callbacks on the gallons per minute. I know a lot of people like that one, but I'm not a fan. So use whatever you like there, but whichever one you choose, use them all in that. Otherwise, you can have problems with that. So I'm putting my pull low at 1200 RPMs. Next one, you see it went to two. We select that one. We're gonna do our cleaner speed. This one has a vacuum, so I don't need a very high speed for that. I'm gonna start it at 2750 until I test it out. And then I may come back out here and lower it a little bit once I play with the valves. And I like to do half skinner, skimmer and half vacuum and get that to where it moves just right in that mode. So I'm gonna call that was my cleaner. So we're gonna find cleaner and I keep going down instead of up, which is taking longer, but is what it is. All right, so RPM. Now we're gonna go for our spa. I like my spas high. Some people do like a spa high and a spa low. I just do one spa speed and I make it high and the customer can make that speed whatever they want. So I do a 3250 on my spa and let the customer adjust it in their phone later. So we are going all the way up to 3250 RPMs on this one and we will call it spa. After that, I will need a spillway. So again, this is RPMs. This is gonna be my spillway. Um, you know, it depends on the size of your spillway opening on your spa and how much you want it to overflow. This has got a small opening, so I'm gonna do about 2550. And if it doesn't do enough water, I'll crank it up or the customer can do it on their phone. But it's a really small one, so 2550 will make a really good spillway. After that, I will have all of my circuits labeled with speeds. And what I wanna do next is go into one more speed. I make a heater speed. So if they want to heat their entire pool and they do it on low speed, that it will automatically, 1200 won't be enough to heat that pool. So we'll automatically ramp up to 2550 when it feels that the heater is on. And that way they don't have to keep cranking it into their own speed of cleaner to try to keep up with the heater being on. It just makes it more user friendly. So that's a super easy way to do that for them. Um, so I go back through and make sure I have everything. We've got pool, we got cleaner, we got spa, we got spillway, and I have my cleaner. We're gonna back out, and I'm gonna back out, and I'm gonna back out. All right, so after that, 
we can go into heat settings. You can look and see that my heater is off my pool. I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna have my spa heater on, which is good. That way I can test it. Um, I also wanna go and find in uh, settings, my manual heat. And I always wanna turn off my manual heat because what happens is customers keep calling me and saying, the heat keeps turning off on my screen logic, even though I uh, told it to turn off and I don't know why it's doing that. So just save yourself the trouble and turn the manual heat off. That will uh, save you some phone calls there. Um, then we're gonna go into the Intella Core. And if you have a salt system, you can leave that enabled, but on a brand new system, they enable them regardless. So if you don't wanna see that on your phone, then just take it off. So now we're gonna do our schedules. Um, I like to do a egg timer. So once you get into schedule here, you can click it again and you can do egg timer. You can do a once only timer. You can delete that schedule if you did that on accident. What we're gonna do is an egg timer. I always like to set an egg timer on my spa if you're having a party and uh, you leave the spa running, your gas is running, your bubbles are running, you got all this stuff going. Um, a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of gas. If you fall asleep, it'll turn off after five hours rather than 12, just saves you, saves you energy. On your pool here, it's going to be our low speed. We're going to go in schedule. We want to schedule. We're going to leave on that one. This you have to go all the way through to a.m. p.m. You can't click on the p.m. We're going to do 9 p.m. And then we're going to go all the way to 9 a.m. And then we are going to get out. And then I'm going to come down here to, you can make egg timers and more of these, but I don't want them. I'm going to go into my cleaner. I'm going to overlap my pull high and my pull low. And I have a reason for doing that. I want my motor just to slow down rather than go all the way off and turn all the way on. So it will only read the high speed. So it'll go from nine to one on the high speed. That's when the vacuum will move. And at one, even though it said low speed was on, it really isn't. It'll just slow down to low speed. And that's super easy. You can also set another high speed. So I could go back into here and make an egg timer. I like an egg timer for my, my cleaner. So we go back again to schedule, make it say egg timer. And you make like a, uh, three hour egg time for the vacuum. So every time they turn their vacuum on, it's automatically going to shut off after three hours for them. So that's just kind of user friendly. They can change it to something else if they want. Um, and at this point we are done for what we're gonna do on here. I'll do the rest in the screen logic config and clean some things up. But that's a good idea of how to do some basics on here. Obviously this thing's super smart. So you could have way more valves and features and uh, you'll have to follow another one if you wanna see one that has valves and how to add that stuff to it or how to do a multiple pump. But this is a very standard scheduling of a Easy Touch 8. Thanks and uh, hope you enjoy this video.